Have you ever wondered if someone is on your computer, your network, or did the reverse shell without you knowing? So in this video, I'll be showing you, I created a file that is gonna detect on Linux if you have a reverse shell, on Windows if you have a reverse shell. So I'll guide you through the process. I'll make it easier for you. So basically I'll create a, a reverse shell connection with Linux first and then we'll use the detector to see if it's gonna detect there's a reverse shell connected and i'll do it for both windows and linux so let's start so on the right side here you can see that i have the reverse shell uh, repository if you remember or if you didn't watch my video my previous video i created a bat file for windows and for linux how to create a reverse shell connection with the victim from the attacker and this is the repository at the end of the video you will have access to that video for the reverse shell so you will be able to click on it and see the video so now we're just gonna go and check which file we need basically from that so we need the reverse shell so i'll be creating a reverse shell connection now linux.sh before i launch that i want to show you that i have my server running which is linode it's a dummy server that i use for reverse shell so i'm listening to the port 444 right now okay so i'm just gonna put it on the side and launch this one and now we need to add the ip of my server which is this one so i'm just gonna go back so this is the IP, I'm going to paste it and we have oh, the port which is 444, enter. Now I should have an establish, establish connection right here. So connected from an unknown. Okay, so if I do an LS right here, I'm able to see all the files from this one, Kaylee Linux, right? So now that we have established a reverse shell and it's connected and it's a successful reverse shell, now I will be launching the reverse shell detector that I have created. So I'm just gonna do an LS. So basically it's reverse shell detector dot reverse shell detector dot sh and I'm gonna enter. So now it prompts you with welcome to reverse shell detector. It's a very basic uh, prompting. So now we want to detect if there's a reverse shell. So I'm gonna click one. So now it detected that I'm using bash. There's a connection established with that IP with the 444. So now if you want, you can kill that session like this, this process. So now we have the ID, which is 5910. So I'm just gonna click on two. And on the right side, you can see that the connection is still established. So now I'm gonna write 5910, and now the connection just dropped. If I come back to my server, I no longer have access to that uh, Kaylee Linux operation system. So now this is the detector reverse shell. It's very basic, guys. We can uh, improve it in the future. And also, if you're having troubles on opening the sh file, in my documentation, okay, you have to convert DOS to Unix. So you will have to install uh, DOS to Unix and then just run DOS to Unix and the name of your file and it's, it's going to convert it, okay? So this is for the Linux part. So now let's jump into the Windows one, okay? So just putting this on the side, going back to my folders. So now I will show you, it's gonna be very simple because everything is ready for you guys. So it, w it made it easier. Mm, right here, so I'm just gonna put them on the side, right here going back to my server because I want to show you that I no longer have a connection and now I'm just gonna listen back to 
port 444. So now on the left side, I have the detector that I have created. Okay, it's the same process as the Linux one. It's a bit different. And on the right side, it's the one that we did in my previous video, which is doing a reverse shell with Windows. So I'm just going to click on that because this is what we want to do today. I will be pasting the Linode server, which is this one, and I'll be pasting the port. And before doing that, I just want to show you that we are connected successfully. So now I'm connected to this operation system, which is window, Windows, sorry. And now we want to see if there's a detection of a reverse shell in order to making sure that the detector is working properly. So I'm just going to start now. Okay. So now I'm going to get prompt what I want and i want to detect if there's a reverse shell but please remember in windows you have so many process if you want to call it sessions so we have the nvidia we have chrome we have explorer teams whatever you want adobe so there's so many connections and what you want to look for it's stuff that doesn't make sense like for example ncat like if i go up as you can see now i have an ncat connection I shouldn't have an NCAT connection, right? But Chrome, it's a known, it's a known company, right? But NCAT, why do I have a connection with NCAT? What's the benefit of it? So for example, like NVIDIA, okay, I know I have NVIDIA installed, so I need that, but why do I have the NCAT? So, for, so now we have a connection with uh, this one, and this is the one that has the reverse shell. And if we go to, uh, if you want to kill it, we just have to take the ID number. So 11692. So now 11692. So and one, 11692. And enter 11692. Sometimes it prompts you twice. So now we have killed the connection of that reverse shell. So now we, we no longer have the connection. As you can see, we're no longer on C, and that's about it. So this video is very simple, very easy, and very quick for you guys. If you like it, please don't forget to subscribe and comment below. If you have any question, I will be putting the link of the GitHub repository of the detector, and you have also have access to the reverse shell with Nmap. So you have both the detector and how to create a reverse shell. And at the end of this video, you will be able to click on the how to create a reverse shell connection. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.